talking a little bit about Angular, and I wanted to do this video before the weekend because, of course, you guys have the long three-day weekend. Hopefully, some of you guys will be here on Monday. That'll be great. I got to do it in the voice of the guy from uh, Office Space, though. Does anyone have a good imitation of that? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's open up a terminal here. And when we're going to be doing our Angular projects, we're going to be using what's called a CLI. You guys remember what that stands for? Command line interface. I heard it over there. All right. So what command line interface were you guys using in Python? Shell. Shell? Is what you said? Well, it was the Django CLI, right? OK, so we used the Django CLI to, to essentially bootstrap a project for us so that we didn't have to build this thing from scratch. right? And now when we're doing our Angular stuff, we're going to have some similar functionality here. So it's going to build out the skeleton of a project for us so that we don't have to do that from scratch. Pretty nice. So it's kind of like a start project. Mm hmm Yeah, exactly. So in order to use the CLI, first we need to install it through NPM. And just like I was saying, we could, in, we could install TypeScript. We can also install this Angular CLI. So let's do that. So I'll say NPM I dash G for global, and then we're going to say at Angular CLI. That's how you have to put the at? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. Yeah, so that's a namespacing thing that NPM has now. It didn't always use that, but yeah. And so what, what that does is that if another person wants to have a package called CLI, they can do so, they would just have a different namespace in front of it. Okay. Okay. All right. So now that I've got that installed, let me go to my directory here where I want to do things. Oops. Dojo stacks mean lectures. Okay. And then let's just create a basic Angular app. Okay. So I can say ng new, and we'll just call this hello Angular. Okay, so noticing, notice here that it's creating this structure for us like we were talking about, right? Number of files, it's installing the packages that it needs as well. So this may take a little bit of time depending on your connection. Or a lot of time, yeah. Yeah, when I try to Yeah, yeah, and we'll get to that here once my. Good grief. <laughs> the heck is going on? He stole his connection. Oh, you know what? Maybe. I turned on my phone. No, that's not it. Okay. Nice. Okay, so cool. We've got this project, Hello Angular, created, right? And let's open that up in our text editor to just see what it looks like. So we'll go code, hello, Angular. Why did that not ask me about styles and such? Now I'm like scratching my head. Usually it does, it'll, it'll typically ask you, how do you want to handle your styles? And then do you want routing for the application? Say yes for yeah, okay. just go ahead and say yes for now. We're not going to use it at least initially, but eventually we will. Um, hmm. That's puzzling to me. Okay, so again, it created this whole directory structure for us. Notice how we've got this source directory right here, SRC. And then inside there, we've got some different folders as well. So we've got an app folder, an assets folder, an environments folder. Mainly the one that we're going to be inside is just going to be this app folder. All right. So let me go into my terminal here and let's try to run this guy. So what I can what I can do. Oh, maybe that was too big. 
I can say ng and then serve to actually, it's going to, number one, have to build up the project a little bit further. And then finally, it's going to serve it so that I can just open up my browser and take a look. So let's say ng serve. Oh, what is going on here? Oh. Do I have the old version of Angular installed? Holy vey. Okay, guys, sorry. Let me, let me try to uninstall this thing. So npm, un, uh, npm uninstall dash g angular cli up to date. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so it looks here like our like our bundles have been built. It created these different chunks of JavaScript for us. All right, and we should be able to visit this in the browser. Um, Seems like it usually tells you what port it's on. I want. Oh, there it is, 4200. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Okay, so if I go here, oops, localhost 4200. Oh yeah, I'm definitely looking at the old version of Angular. How did this happen? Whew, sorry about that. I'll get that part figured out after this. But basically. You can see that it, it made the process of creating the application extremely simple, right? There wasn't really much I had to do. I just had to do ng-new, and then the name of the project, and then ng-serve once I'm inside the correct directory, which is just inside that project's directory, okay? Now, also notice here that inside of our directory, we have this node modules folder, okay? So later on, when you guys combine the Express apps that we've been making thus far and these Angular projects, you're going to have two separate node modules folders. All right. So this could potentially make it kind of tricky to upload your assignments to the platform. So what I'm going to advise you guys to do is to delete those two node modules folders before you zip and upload your projects. Okay. So basically wait until you're sure that, hey, everything's done with this assignment, I'm good to go, then you can delete those folders. Don't worry, you can, you can always get them back quite easily if you just do npm install when you're inside the correct directory, it will repopulate that node modules folder. Okay? You could like just make a copy, like delete the node from the copy. Or that. That yeah. Have your original. Yep. Yeah, so there's some ways around it. I know it's kind of a hassle, but it is what it is. Okay, and so inside this source directory, right now we have under the app folder, we've got some different things, right? So we've got a app.component.css, we've got an app.component.html, and then we also have this file right here, the .spec file is actually for testing, and we're not going to be doing anything with that here. But then this, app.component.ts, this is going to be where the main logic for your component lies. Okay? And initially, when we create our first projects, we're only going to have one component. Now, if you were to make a, a much bigger project, we could have lots and lots of components. But our stuff is going to be fairly simple to start with. Okay? So if I open up my app.component.html, Notice here that this is actually the stuff that's appearing on my screen. So if I go back to my page here, see where it says welcome to app? And then if I go back here, welcome to title, right? Okay. So this should look pretty familiar to you guys, at least from your Python days, right? If we use the double mustache tag, 
that means that we want to output something to our template, right? Okay. So where that is, if we go inside of our app.component.ts, <clears throat> notice how we've specified a title and we've set it equal to app. So how could we change that? What if we want to call it um, Friday? We would call our, our app Friday. Okay, so if I change that in here, if we go back to the page, voila, just changed like that, right? So it has its own like, engine template? Yes. Yes, so we don't it does. Do nope. Yep. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't want you guys to get sort of like too stuck or tied to EJS, which is that, you know, when Angular comes in, things change a little bit. All right. So that's how we can change that. And notice how we also had some hot reloading there going on. So I didn't even have to refresh that page at all, right? Isn't that great? No more no more. Awesome. Well, <laughs> here's the thing, though. When we're running these projects in conjunction with an Express app, you are going to still use NodeMod. Because we have two things going on. We've got our back end, which is the Express app, and then we've got the front end, which is the Angular app. Okay. Okay. So actually, when, when we run these in conjunction with our Express apps, we're not going to do ng-serve. We're going to do ng-build, which is a different command. And when that happens, we will have to refresh our page. So it'll be kind of a pain. But there are some assignments in the platform where you're just creating a front end in Angular and there's no back end at all. And for those ones, you can do ng-serve. Okay. Okay. And no hot reload. You won't have to refresh your browser at all, which is quite nice. Cool. All right. So you notice that we had this styling in here too. So what if I want to, um, first of all, let's just rip some of that stuff out of the template so that it's not so crowded. We've got the title up here, and I'll just grab everything all the way down here. Let me just close out this div. Oh. All right. So if I wanted to give some style to this particular component, I have this localized space where I can do it. So this .css file is essentially specific to this particular component. Okay. So if I create a style in here called green, let's just say color is green. Pretty exciting. Now let's apply that to something inside of our component. So if we go in here, oops, I wanted to be in my template. So the HTML part is our template. And I'll just do div.green, hello green. And if I go back here, just like that, right? It's, it's always refreshing for me. So if I inspect this style, there we go. Okay, and notice these things in here too. We got like ng content dash c0. Okay. Also, this, what's this app root thing? It's kind of interesting. What do you guys think that is? This is where the whole, <laughs> it's a squad of geeks, right? This is where the whole thing, <laughs> this is where the whole thing is being mounted. That's the point in, in the DOM, in your document object model, where the whole app is being mounted. All right. Pretty cool. What if I wanted to loop through something? So let's, um, let's touch on that because we often do that in our apps, right? So inside my, my app component, what if I wanted to just create an array of something, something that I wanted to loop through? All right, somebody come up with an array that we want to loop through. Fruits. That's good, right? Bananas. <laughs> Oranges. Ooh, I love nectarines. Good call. All right, so I've got this list of fruits here. Now inside my template, I can easily reference them because they're they are now inside my component.ts file, okay? So if I go back inside my template, this HTML file here, 
and I'm just going to say div, or wait, oops, p, my favorite fruits are. Okay, and then we'll just create an unordered list. Inside there we'll have an li, right? Now I want to loop through these guys. Does anyone know how I can do it in Angular? There it is. Pretty nice, right? We've got this little ng4, and then I can set that equal to something. Okay? So I could say something like let fruit of Oh no. Um, <laughs> how, how much longer are you at? Uh, yeah, let's do pictures real quick. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, sorry. I'll be sorry. right, right <laughs> back. Yeah, stop. Sorry. Yeah, pause. Yeah. Pause. pause it. All right, now I'm going to have to splice it together. Yeah, let me stop it. I'm trying to loop through some fruits, right? Always a fun thing. Fruit. <laughs> 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 I love it. All right. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So we're going to say let fruit of fruits, right? Sure. It should look fairly familiar, um, pretty similar to what we were doing in Python, right? And then inside there, what I want to do is inside each one of these list items, I just want to actually output the fruit itself, right? So I can use those double mustache tags like this and say fruit. Okay, so let's go back to our browser. Oops, hello green. There we go. You don't have to do an N4? No, we do not have to do an N4 because notice here that the tag itself is being closed. Right? So can you write a multi line for loop without having anything that you're doing surrounding it? You mean what if what if I wanted to loop through things but I didn't want an li item? Is that what you're saying? Looping through a list, right? What if you had like a, a multi-line thing and then you want to uh, a method that comments like multiple inputs with labels? Right. Yeah, so we would probably we would probably have a div surround or like a wrapper element, right? That was actually doing the ng4 stuff. Yeah. All right. So that's pretty cool. That's how we can do a loop. What else can we do? We can also determine whether something is true or false. We can have conditionals inside our templates as well. So how would I do that? Let me come outside this, this UL here. And then let's just go back to our app.component file here. And what if I wanted to say name and then put in my name. So then inside my template here, what if I only want to output something if my name actually is more? Right? How can I do that? So I could make it a div or whatever I wanted it to be. Maybe it would be a p tag. And then how do I how do I only output something if my name is more? Is it going to be the ng if? Yeah, this time instead of ng4, we're going to use ng if. Okay. Yeah, so we'll say asterisk ng if, and then inside here is the condition that I want to be true or false, right? So I could say name equals, and then I'll put in single quotes here. So if that's true, I'm just going to output my name is, and then we'll use those double mustaches again, name like that. All right, so let's look at our template here. Now it's printing. If I change it, of course, inside my app.component.ts, if I say my name is, or if I change it to Anthony here, it's not there anymore, right? 
So not so bad, right? I mean, this kind of templating stuff, this looks pretty familiar in, in a lot of ways. It should be familiar. Okay, cool. So another thing that we can do inside Angular that um, is maybe a little bit easier than, than how it was when you guys were doing regular JavaScript or jQuery is listening for certain events to happen, okay? So what if I wanted to have a button on my page that was going to do something when that button gets clicked? How could we do that? So if I go into my template again, I just want to create a button of some sort. I'll just say click me here. And then what I want to have happen is I'm just going to console log something out when this button is clicked on, right? So that we can see, hey, we're responding to this click, or we could potentially respond to it. So what I want to do is here, I want to put in parentheses the name of the event that I'm listening for. So I'm just going to put click in here. Okay. Now I need to say, what do I want to have happen when that button is clicked? So how would we have done this in jQuery? Inside script tags. Yeah, inside script tags, definitely. And then dollar sign mm here -hmm. by the name. Yeah, so inside inside parentheses, we'd somehow find a way to select this button, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what else? At the uh, listener. Yeah, so we might say something like dot click, mm -hmm. and then in when we invoke the dot click function you pass in a callback function that we want to run, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I could just say click handler if I want. Okay. And notice how I'm actually invoking that function right there. Okay. So in order to make this work, what I need to do is go back to my app.component.ts and create a click handler function to run. Okay. So let's go back to that file here. And then I'll create this click handler. Oops. That doesn't take anything in, right? And then inside here, I'm just going to console log clicked. Okay, so I'll save that and then I'll save my component. And if we go back here, I'll open up the console so that we can see what's happening here. There we go, right? So I clicked on the button, and we're getting this console log here, and I can just keep clicking away to my heart's content. You can see it says it was clicked 13 times. All right. Pretty nice how this how this whole thing works out, right? So we've got an event that we're listening for, and then we just say, what do we want to have happen when that event occurs, right? I wanted to invoke this function. Now I could optionally provide something in there. So what if I, what if I wanted this click handler to run on each one of these um, li items? I could do the same thing up here, right? I could say click equals click handler. And what if I wanted to pass in some argument, for instance? What if I wanted to pass in five for no particular reason. Like later on we'll actually have some IDs that we're getting back maybe from Mongo or something like that. But for now, let's just say I want to pass in this argument here when I invoke the click handler. So I can save that here and if I go back inside here I can take in some kind of a number, right? So I could say we'll call it num and then we'll say that it's of type number. Right? And then let's just console log out num. Okay, so let's go in here. We've already refreshed. Notice that my, my console log has disappeared, so that's cool. So if I click on these fruits, notice how five is being logged down here. And I can click on any one of the fruits because they're all invoking click handler with five. All right. Now, of course, later on when we're iterating, say we're iterating through a number of different things that maybe have different IDs, we can use something like this to pass the ID in. So if I want 
clicking on the button to take me to a specific page, for instance, I can do that using the ID of the item. Yes, Tom. Can we invoke a function inside the, the find with the camera? Invoke another function inside here? So when we click the button, it's going to run a uh, function. Well, you could have another function that runs inside here, inside your click handler. Yeah, absolutely. What if you only wanted to click on one fruit? I would, like, say apples. Mm -hmm. Like, say bananas would lead to a banana page, orange to orange page. Apples to an apple pick, how would you do that if you have to wait for it? To so, okay, so let's say we wanted to pass in, instead of passing in a number, what if we pass in the fruit itself? And then in here, I'll change this. So we'll say, instead of num, we'll say this is a fruit and it will be a string, right? Oh, by the way, notice how we're getting this little issue down here. Why is that? Not find. That's TypeScript, right? So yeah, exactly. Cannot find name num. All right, and what if I, let's see here. What if I said this was going to be a number? Uh, actually, we can't really do that in here. But anyway, so let's just change this to a string. And then we'll pass in fruit right there. So basically, you were saying let's only log it if it's an apple or something like that. Is that was that yeah, the idea? Only be able to click on apple. Yeah. Oh, only to be able, be able to click on apple. Hmm. So like a conditional click handler. We could make it so that oh, it only okay. so that it only responds to apple for sure. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right, because now I'm passing in the actual fruit. So if I save this and I go back inside here. I could just say if fruit equals apple, oops, then let's just console log fruit. Okay. So now inside here, if I click on nectarine, I wouldn't expect that to do anything, right? Or actually, I forgot it's plural here, so apples, right? Okay, so if I click on nectarines, oranges, nothing. And then when I click on apples, finally, now we're getting what we expect, right? Awesome. Right, cool. So that's about it. I was just going to give you guys kind of like a, a mild little overview of Angular. That's what's to come. Um, nothing scary, I don't think, or crazy, right? Mostly. The TypeScript, I guess, could be a little scary, but as you as you've seen here, most of this stuff we've already used before. You know, just defining a function inside of a class, we've done that before too, a little bit. Any other questions before we call it a day, call it a, call it a week? So this is the, the front end? This part. is the front end, yeah. So, so Angular is completely building these pages for us dynamically using the browser. So the browser has to parse all of this JavaScript and do this work of creating an HTML page on the spot. So if you were to actually, let's view the page source real quick so that you can see what that would look like. So if I go view page source, where's all my content? <laughs> all, all that's really being served here is just this sort of HTML shell of a page. It doesn't really have very much in it. But we have all of these scripts that are being loaded down here. Those are the things that are doing all the work for us. So like, would that mean once we use the back end that we won't have to use views anymore? Or each of uh, the EJS Correct, yeah. Files? We're not going to use EJS at all because we're using Angular to render our front end. And we're just going to be serving up JSON like we did earlier today with the, the uh, RESTful Tasks API. So it's just Link them. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so these two things will be connected. We'll be using inside of our Angular app, we'll reach back and make calls to our API, go get some data, and then render something on the page, and so forth. Okay. okay. So each time we, we hit a different, say, you know, quote, page in our application, we're going to have to go reach back and grab the data that comes with that page. Once we get it, then we can render it out.
So it'll, it'll be a little bit different than what you guys have done previously. But Angular's pretty fun. React is even more fun. Are they similar? Uh, yeah, they're similar in some ways. I mean, they're both component-based, which means that I can have this structure where I have nested components inside them and so forth. But you think, like, I'm just wondering if after the course is over, if it's pretty realistic to teach, like, have the teacher itself react knowing Angular. Yeah, and there, and there are tons and tons of resources out there as well. It's like... Udemy would uh, recommend yeah. one that, like, I looked up online for, like, that was interested too, and um, a lot of people say that Udemy, it's like 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then we have access to React if we have the alumni Yeah, pass, I believe right? that's true. Yeah, if you get the alumni pass, cool. right. And that curriculum is currently being revamped as well. So, you know, possibly by the time you guys are finished, maybe there will be some some improved stuff in there. Yeah, so conceptually they kind of work in a similar way in the sense that the page is being built up through JavaScript in the browser. Okay, The syntax is going to look a little bit different once you start. So in React you have this thing called JSX, which looks a little bit different. Um, but, you know, different people have different preferences. React is, is a little bit more flexible in how you build things in it, whereas Angular is more opinionated. It's more of like a full-fledged, full-featured framework that has a lot of stuff built in. It has routing built in, which React does not. So that means we can add multiple apps to this one? Um, no, generally you just have one. Uh, you, you could obviously have multiple apps, but, but nothing, we're not going to be doing any, anything quite like that in here. Things will be large, fairly simple. Cool. All right, let's have thumbs on this. So bad, right? Yeah. All right. Great. I want to wish you guys a happy.